Welcome back, everybody. This is Wavern, and this is the fifth episode of the S Shuttle Guide. Today, we're going to do something similar to the last episode. We're going to be taking our Cali box and we're going to bounce through and recreate our pivoting network very similar to the one we did last time, except the way that this Ubuntu box is going to connect into everything is using a reverse SSH tunnel. So you're going to use a tack R command. If you look into that, you'll see what that is. And uh, you'll see that actual command in a little bit. And that's going to help us get past these firewalls right here. Last time we used port forwarding rules and we, we bounced through these port forwarding rules to get over. Um, they're being forwarded. These ports are being forwarded to get access to Ubuntu 1. This time we're not going to do that. We're actually going to we're going to go with the scenario that this is a compromised machine. It could be malware. It could be a compromised bring your own device that was compromised somewhere else and brought into this network. It could be a cell phone that's associated here and has access to data also. <clears throat> There's uh, a lot of ways that this is a realistic scenario. But essentially, one way or another, whether clicking on an email or any one of those other scenarios or something else, insider threat or whatever it might be, this is a compromised box that has a dual homing. It was a dual homed host, which means it has two gateways. Uh, and we're going to take advantage of that to ultimately exfil data from this box to this box. So we will be doing some interesting little configurations. And we're kind of going to you know, start from this Cali box up here and a compromised host. And we're going to build a pivoting network. Then we're going to slowly work our way to finding the file. Then we're going to slowly work our way to deliver that file to this box over here. All the while, everything is going to be driven from this box. So uh, it's more of a realistic scenario. All right, there we are. So this box is set up. We'll go look at the other one just to make sure it's where we want it at. All right, this box right here. So this box should have a 5500 port open, which is going to be the way that we get to that Ubuntu one boxes in Sandbox one, where we'll start navigating around. Okay, so we look inside of here and we can see that there's a 5500 box. The issue though, is that this is only accessible from the local, um, from the local host so it's not something that we can actually add to a chain right now unless we do some port forwarding which is what we're going to do so we'll do that a little bit later now that we've got our vulnerable host in place which is ubuntu 1 and it is connected to ubuntu 4b it's time for us to start working on that pivoting network so let's go into cali 4 here look at our ssh dot or dot ssh config file Look at this. All right, so here, this one's a little more complicated than the last one was. So we have host A, which is again host A. We have host B, which is host B. Uh, we have host C, which is Ubuntu 1 down here. That's host C, but you'll notice that the IP address here and here are the same, and that's because of that reverse tunnel. To get to host C, you actually access it through host B up here and the reverse tunnel. So I have host C set up with everything that you would need. And the fact is we want to get there through A. So to get to C, you're going to go through A. So you go to A, then you go to B, which is forwarded to C. So that's what this is talking about right here. That's why we got two entries that are similar. If I want to go straight to B and like reverse... I'm going to get an actual like a sh terminal or something like that. I can just go straight to P, and you'll see me do that in a second. And if I want to get to C uh, and start doing all that fun stuff, then, uh, of course, this is the path we're going to take, which just basically is the same as B, but I have a port that I need to go into. And uh, Our last two entries are Voln21 and Kali2. So let's look at that. So Voln21 is our vulnerability. This is where we're going, our vulnerable host. And this is where we're going to find a file to exfil. 
and we will our goal is to deliver it to this particular box here the first step we're going to do is we're going to ssh into that b as you saw earlier and we're going to do the port forwarding rule so that we can actually um, get access to c but right now What we have is a 5500 port right here, and what we want is that this we want a 50. We wanted it, we could have used this if it wasn't that it was tied to the local host. So we're gonna port forward that so that it is tied to uh, a public publicly accessible port. So here we go. And there's our 5501 right here, and it is something that we can get to. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And we're gonna move into the Kali box. All right, so now it's time for us to go ahead and start the actual SSH, I mean the SS, the S shuttle um, pivot network. And that's it right there. We are trying to get the C, like I said, and now that we've done that port forward and everything, we can actually do that. Okay, we are connected. Now we're gonna go ahead and just get right into it. I'm gonna move kind of quick. I'm not gonna explain everything like I did once in other videos um, you can just go back and look at them and they should have all the information to kind of give context here here we go this is just a quick banner grab and there it is we know it's uh, open SSH and of course we already know the creds so we're fine but I found it and that's all I really wanted to do um, now we're gonna go ahead and log in really fast look for that critical file that we really want Inside of here, that critical file is this one right here that says important data. Okay, got it. So that's what we're going to exfil. There's the MD5. We'll see if you guys may have to rewind it to just verify when we're at the end. But there it is. So we, you can see I did it. All right. Okay, so we we'll may do this sometimes. You'll see me doing this. And what we're looking at is the where am I right now. This is our Cali 4 boxes IP, by the way. So every time you see that, it means we're back on our Cali 4 box. Cali 4 box right here. Which is us. That's us. That's what we're that's what we're gonna be driving this whole scenario from. Alright, and you can see right here, Cali 4. So there we are, back to where we started from. We found our target. We got access to the, the network through a vulnerable host. And, oh, one thing I didn't do, let's we'll do this really quick again, is I didn't get the directory of where that file is located. Now you can see it right there. So that is the directory where our file is located. And then I showed you earlier what the name of that file was. Which is right there. Okay, now we're done with this. Okay, now we're going to go and log into and set up our um, network like we did in the other video so that we can route the traffic the other way, essentially, through the rogue router, which is towards our exfil target. We have to get traffic to flow in the right direction so that we can actually go ahead and exfil the data the way we want to. So that means we're going to SSH. Into Ubuntu 1, which we can do it directly like this because we have that S shuttle pivot network set up. And there we go. So now we are on Ubuntu 1, which is right there. So we just, we're SSH into that right now. All right. What we're going to do is 
manipulate our routing just like we did before. Again, check the other videos if you want to know what this command means. But basically, this is how we're going to make sure that after I reroute all of our default gateway traffic the other way, that our C2 traffic, which is the one I'm using right now to control, you know, access this from Cali 4, that still goes the normal way so that we can actually maintain our connection. All right, so that's all that's going on right there. And now we do the next one. Then we just verify everything's good to go. And we can see that we have the new default route. We see the metric is lower, so it's going to use this one. And we see that we have our, our uh, comms link from Cali 4 still in place. Uh, which is pretty obvious because I'm still communicating on it. Okay, back to Cali 4. That's where we are right now. Now we're going to go... Alright, so now that we have rerouted our traffic, we're going to slowly build a path from here all the way through here. So right now I'm going to jump onto the rogue router and I'm going to create a... Um, I'm working my way from this, from here to the rogue router to this Kali 2 box. And I'm going to basically build a path from here back to here through using a SSH TAC R and a reverse shell. I'm sorry, a reverse terminal. And then I'm going to take and build another one of those reverse terminals and go back to here. And then I'm going to use this Cali box to make that big connection all the way through and link up to that reverse shell or reverse, reverse tunnel that then pops me in over here. And at that point, I have connectivity to the two pieces that I need. So now I can take this piece and drop it over onto this piece and I can drive that entire thing from here. So that's what I'm working on right now. So the first step is get on the ro that uh, Rogue Router one and start moving my way over piece by piece. Okay, 12.1 is the is the interface for the IP of the inter one of the interfaces on that router that I can get to directly from Cali 4. So here I am, I'm on this one, I'm on this box. Now I'm going to go all the way over to Cali 2, that box I was saying I wanted to get to before. All right, so now let's look at this really fast. There's actually several ways to do this. I could change the default um, for this box, this Cali 2 box. I could change the um, the default route of that traffic, just like I did with this Ubuntu or one over here. I could change this one to not go that way, but to actually go that way. And at that point, I can actually go straight from my Cali 4 all the way through. So this is just kind of a choice. And then I would come back through. All right, let's go keep going. So now that I'm on Cali 2, this box right here, I am going to start building that reverse, reverse tunnel uh, path so I can gain access to it from Cali 4. So here we are. And that's the command right there. So we're going to do, you're going to see a 5507 open up on the router, essentially, that I had access to. Okay. Done. Now let's go ahead and look at this one. Let's see if that port did open. Inside of here. We're looking for that 5507. There it is. It's the same situation. 
Uh, so anyway. Okay. Now we're good with this. So now we're going to go back to Ubuntu 1. And we're going to take a look over there to make sure that we have a 5508 and that we can reach that. So let's give that a shot. Okay. So just make sure I'm back on my, yep, see, I'm back on Cali 4 again. Okay, no big deal. Let's keep moving. So from here, now we're going to go back to that Ubuntu 1 box. And we're going to look at, to see if we have that port open that we wanted. And there it is. That's the port. All right. So once again, we can see that it's here, but it's not accessible to the outside of this. And I need Cali 4 to access, access this port so that it can have access ultimately to Cali 2, right? So let's just look at this really quick one more time. So I have successfully taken Cali 2. Now let's, okay, clear that. Let's put the circles on. I've successfully taken Cali 2. And at this time, we have a series of reverse tunnels and push those back to Ubuntu 1. We are almost done because that is accessible by our Kali box that's up here, right? It's accessible by this Kali box, but as we can see in here, this is a 127001 local host. It's not accessible outside of the box itself, but we need that to be a thing. So it's just like the other ones. I'm kind of, I won't keep repeating myself as videos go on, but I don't know repetition maybe it's a thing so what i'm doing so this is how we're doing it all right um right now we're going to do the same thing we did before and we're going to push a um a new port we're going to forward a 5509 port to this 5508 and the 5509 is going to be the external point that people can access to get access to cali 2 which is what we're going to use from cali 4 to get access to cali 2 so here we go Now we're going to check it out. 5508 and 5509, and there it is. It is accessible to the outside, so we're good to go. Awesome. Now we are ready. Almost. Yeah, so what we're going to do right now is look for the destination folder. We're going to take Cali 4, which we should be on right now. And f make sure that we land on Cali 2 and that we know where we're going to send this XFIL file. And then we're going to go ahead and run the XFIL command. And then our video is nearly done. Here we go. All right. So where are we? We are on... Cali 2. So at this point, I was able to successfully SSH from our Cali 4 to our Cali 2. And the way that, oh, hold on. There we go. And that path looks like this. Wonderful path. That's what it looks like. And now our final mission is our final mission is to go from here to here through this series of paths. All right. That's it. So let's do it. Now we run the exfil command. Oh, actually, I forgot. Now we're going to do this really fast. This is where we're going to put it. Slash home. It's not in here. Slash home slash user two. That's where it's going to drop to. So now we know our. We now know our where our file is located, on the one in our network, and we have a path to exfil it to the place we want it to go to. 
and we know where that location is on the file system as well so now it's just putting it all together we will be leveraging like i said earlier that .ssh config file and this time we're going to be using vuln21 and Kali because we have the two pieces we set up the path we got them both so now i can link them and send the file directly from the one to the other and we'll do an md5 sum and then we'll be done so here it goes to the Kali 2 box. So if I didn't mistype everything, that should go through. Just asking me for these now. And the file is transferring. So it's almost over there. We did the MD5 sum already. However, just to make it easy for everybody, I think I'm gonna try it one more time. There we are, okay, ls, okay, so there, that's the md5 sum, I'm going to see if I can't keep this on the same screen for you guys so you can compare them, now we're going to do the We're going to go look and see if that file exists where I want it to be. And then we're going to do the MD5. There it is, by the way. That's the file. Um, and so that you're tracking, there's the MD5 sum. I keep bringing this up just so that it stays. So there's the, there's the MD5 sum that we want to match. And I'm um, just going to say my eyes are telling me it's good to go. There's that. And there's that. So we did our job. We got everything done. So I'm going to go ahead and just say at this point that we are, we are finished. And what we ended up doing, what we ended up doing was creating a pivoting network. Like I said, went through everything, transparent proxy. And in the end, we took a file from there, pushed it to there by creating a new path to that so that our data could travel outside of that while still giving us access to the Kali box up here through the original path, the original pivoting network path. All right. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. And this video was a little bit longer. Uh, there's a little bit more to it. All right. Have a good one. Bye.